Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be comparing two numbers. We have 2021 factorial squared and 2021 to the power 2021. So this will be the last premiere of 2021 and I wanted to, I wanted to end this year with a special problem that emphasizes 2021. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. This is an interesting problem. Uh, comparing two numbers is fairly interesting and you know that we've done some factorial comparisons before. Anyways, we are going to solve this problem in the general case. So it's going to be nice because uh, you can apply this general case to other specific cases as well. So here is what we're going to consider. We're going to write n factorial squared as n factorial times n factorial. This makes sense, right? Okay, now n factorial obviously means the product of all these positive integers 1 through n, but obviously we can write it in different ways. So it can be descending or ascending. So I'm going to write it in two different ways. One of them is going to look like this. 1 times, 2 times, dot, 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 all the way up to n. And the other one is going to be descending. So I'm going to start with n, and then n minus 1, dot, 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 and then 3, 2, 1, whatever. So we have this product. And now the reason why I do that is I'm going to be picking a number from each group. And then I'll put them together. Uh, the, the way we put these together is, uh, you know, kind of special. For example, I'm going to pair up 1 with n. So th those are both the first uh, factors in each group. So it's going to be like my first group is going to be 1 times n. My second group is going to be 2 and n minus 1. So I'm going to be pairing up 2 with n minus 1. And then I'll, I'll pair up uh, 3 with n minus 2 and so on and so forth, right? And obviously, uh, this is going to go uh, all the way to the end. But we, we kind of need to figure out what's going to happen uh, what's going to happen um, in the middle, like for a general term. Notice that 3 is being multiplied by n minus 2. So if you add them, for example, 3 and n minus 2, you're going to get n plus 1. So the sum of the two factors in each group is basically always n plus 1. And you can verify that. So how do you write it in general form instead of like 3 if I was using a k, for example, right? What would k be multiplied by? That's an important um, thing to find out. Uh, the, the way to find out is notice that with the 3 and n minus 2, 2 is 1 less than 3. So 3 is multiplied by something which is n minus 1 less than 3. So k is going to be multiplied by n minus, what is 1 less than k? It is k minus 1, obviously. So we are supposed to subtract k minus 1 from n. And if you kind of replace k with 1, k with 2, k with 3, you're basically going to obtain pretty much all the factors here, right? That's what's going to happen. And obviously, this is not going to end here. This is just in the middle. And when you continue, since we have the n twice, everything is doubled, basically. This is going to end with uh, n times 1. Starts with 1 times n, ends with n times 1. Because when you go from 1 to n, so in other words, we basically have like n groups here, right? And, and Or n pairs, you can call them. Great. So let's go ahead and see what we can do with this. Uh, first of all, notice that k is less than n. You don't want k to be n, okay? I mean, you can, but I'm going to exclude the first and the last groups because they're kind of treated um, separately. Anyways, so k is going to be, and obviously k, you want k to start with 2 and uh, stop before n. So basically, it's going to be like this. k is going to be greater or equal to 2 and less than n. Great. Under those conditions, we're going to take this... Um, general term and see what we can do with this, right? So because I would like to make a comparison here. So I'm going to go ahead and take my n. By the way, I can write that as k times n minus k plus 1, right? Obviously. OK, great. So here's what I'm going to do with this one. That's kind of like fun. Uh, I'm going to be doing a little algebra, a little bit of factoring here. So I'm going to distribute the k over the n minus. Well, I'm not going to distribute, but I'm going to separate the n minus k from the n minus k plus 1. So I have a k left, right? So I have like k times the quantity n minus k plus k. And my goal is to compare this to n, by the way. Let me tell you what I'm trying to do. So now, uh, 
wouldn't that be nice if I could factor this by grouping? So to be able to do that, I do need n minus k, but I have a positive k, so I can't get n minus k, but I can get k minus n, the opposite of n minus k. So why don't we just subtract n and add n? So it's not like both sides doing something to both sides, it's more like doing opposite things to the same side, right? So this is okay. And now this allows you to factor by grouping. And this gives you the following. I can write this as k times n minus k. And then k minus n is the opposite of n minus k, which means it's negative 1 times n minus k. Great. And then, since n minus k is a common factor, I can write it as n minus k multiplied by k minus 1 plus n. Now, this comes from here, which is our general term. And obviously, uh, this process can be repeated for all different k values because we said that k is going to be on this interval, right? So if k is equal to 2, for example, let's take a look at it. If k is equal to 2, you're basically looking at 2 times n minus 2 plus 1, which is obviously n minus 1, as you know. And this is equal to n minus k, which is n minus 2 in this case, multiplied by k minus 1, which is 1 plus n. So what is the good thing about being able to write it that way? Well, you can compare it to n now because we know that n is going to be greater than 2. Therefore, here's what we get from here. n minus k, since we assume that k is less than n, this implies n is greater than k. Since n is greater than k, this is a positive quantity. And we also know that k is greater than or equal to 2. Therefore, k is greater than 1. This is also a positive quantity. Therefore, you're just adding a positive quantity to n, which means you're going to get something larger than n. So this is basically the gist of this solution. So we basically prove that every factor in this product is basically like a generic factor I pulled out is always greater than n. Okay, great. So what we're going to do is we're going to write this for all possible k values. And now we're going to put it together and we're going to get our general term and then we'll talk about the specific case. Okay, great. So now I'm going to start with k equals 1, but obviously k does not equal 1, so I'm going to write it this way. 1 times n is equal to n. Hopefully you agree with me on that. 1 times n equals n, great. And now I'm going to use k equals 2 and that's going to give me 2 times n minus 1 and we just proved that it is actually greater than n. And this is true, obviously, because this just implies that n is greater than 2. And that is true because n is always greater than k, right? This implies that n is greater than 2. But n is always greater than k, and k is 2 in this case. So this is true. And if you continue to do this, like k equals 3, you're going to get 3 times the quantity n minus 2. That is also going to be greater than n. And this will just continue all the way to the end. And the last term here we get is going to be n. And obviously you could do this for n minus 1 as well, but it's just going to repeat the same thing. Like you're going to have n minus 1 times 2 is greater than n. And then finally, you're going to write n times 1. Obviously n times 1 is not greater than n, it is equal to n. But what's going to happen here? We can multiply these together. Well, two of them are equations, the others are inequalities. That's okay. If you don't like this, you can go ahead and multiply these. That's going to give you n minus 2 factors, and then just multiply both sides of the inequality by n squared, and you're going to get the exact same thing. So it's not going to matter. Basically, what's going to happen here is you're going to get the product 1, 2, 3, n minus 1, n. So right here, and on the other one, you're going to get n, n minus 1, n minus 2, all the way down to 1. So you're going to get the n factorial times n factorial, which is n factorial squared. Awesome. And we know that this is going to be greater than because Pretty much everything on the right-hand side is greater, or, or I mean smaller because the left-hand side is greater, but we have a greater than sign, and the equalities actually don't really hurt this. So on the right-hand side, since we have n rows, this is going to become n to the power n. So in other words, we prove the uh, specific problem inequality in the general sense. This is always true if n is greater than, you know, uh, two. What happens at n equals 2? Let's take a look. If n is equal to 2, you get 2 factorial squared is greater than 2 to the second power, which is obviously false. But for n equals 3, 3 factorial squared is 36, and 36 is definitely greater than 3 to the third power, which is 27. Great, so it works starting at 
and equals 3. And obviously, our number is much, 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 much larger. Now, what are we going to do next? We're going to replace n with 2021. And obviously, 2021 is much, much greater than 3 or 2, right? So it's going to work. And this implies, since we have the general inequality, this basically implies that 2021 factorial squared is greater than 2021 to the power of 2021. And today is the last day of 2021. Tomorrow, we're going to have our first premiere of 2022, and we're just going to say Happy New Year. But not yet. Okay, great. So let me show you a couple numerical results so that you can see what it looks like. Obviously, Desmos can't handle it, but Wolfram Alpha can. So 2021 factorial squared is a pretty large number. And if you write two of these numbers together, actually Wolfram Alpha is just going to give you the whole thing. Very, very long page, a super long page. But basically, this number has 11,610 digits. The other number, on the other hand, has fewer digits, much, much fewer. And here's our next number, the next candidate, 6,681 digits. Obviously, you can tell from numerical values too that the factorial squared is going to be much, much larger. And this brings us to the end of this video, which is the last video for 2021. Bye-bye 2021. And we're going to welcome 2022. Thank you for coming to the premiere. I really appreciate your support. Please let me know what you think. I'll see you tomorrow with another video, another special video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.